what kind of programming are you running with right now? Um, so yeah, over the years, uh, I found my way, uh, just to kind of stay with the origin. Um, after strong lifts, I went to conjugate. So I did strong lifts for probably a little, almost two years, probably a little longer than I should have. Uh, but I kept thinking, oh, you know, uh, I'm at this strength level. I'm still a novice, but clearly that that wasn't the case. You know, after a certain amount of time, like you just got to move on to more intermediate style programming. Uh, so I did conjugate for almost a couple of years. I moved on to five, three, one. Uh, that was my first foray into like uh, more like linear and wave style programming. And then I finished that off with a linear 12 week peak from Ed Cone just to see like the tapering process and everything. That was a lot of fun to learn. And then I, over the summer, I ran a pure bodybuilding program, just all hypertrophy work, dynamic double progression on everything. Uh, and then lately I started working with a coach who's been running me through block periodization. Uh, and that's been a lot of fun so far. It's been my favorite style of programming. I don't know if that's just me being biased just because it's what I'm doing right now, but uh, I really like the block. and. It's pretty similar to conjugate, honestly. Like if you're running conjugate with that, where you start off less specific, move on to more specific stuff over time, uh, you're going to see a lot of overlap between the two systems. Yeah, at the end of the day, strength is strength. <laughs> yeah, just have a progressing scheme over time, add weight, add sets. Yep. Add, add mass first and foremost. <laughs> yep. Yep. Start light, go, get heavy over time, basically. You know. Or, even with conjugate, I know that's a thing too. You like in the earlier cycles, you're doing a lot more like SSB, cambered squats, uh, high bar, and then you save the low bar for as you get closer to the, the competition period. Yeah, there is definitely a psychological factor. You have all those lifts, you rotate, and every time you return, you train or mind you're a winner. Every time you step into the gym, it's a PR time. So when the regular squat or something comes, you're already in the zone. You know it's time for PR. And that's one of the main reasons I like conjugate because first and foremost, I like to max. Yeah, That's me too. I was just about to say that. <laughs> most interesting stuff, yes. Yeah. And other stuff, bodybuilding pretty much. And like that. So best of everything I'd like. And athletic aspects as well. I like speed stuff, explosive bands, chains, plyometrics, jumps. I even mix yeah. in occasionally power clean snatch. I don't practice those lifts, but my form is pretty solid. And yeah. I all I have full clean around three, 300 pounds or something without even training. It's no joke. <laughs> yeah. My best is 225, but my form's terrible. It's like a, it's a muscle clean. Yeah. Better for muscle gains in this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, um, I don't know if you're familiar though, but so there's like, no, I'm not really popping my hips to I'm kind of just more like using all yes. arms and upper back. No, uh, yeah. I have the old gym I used to go to uh, back in California there was a Olympic weightlifter there and he told me it was just like a pure muscle clean. He said it's uh he said it was impressive, but some of the worst clean form he's ever seen. Yeah. Incredible how much form can help, especially in those explosive lifts and timing and such. No wonder they start training from early age and they have practices a few yeah. times a day. You so have that's that's uh, a lot of skill involved. So uh, with the conjugate system. Do you do the speed work like year round or do you have periods where you're doing like your intensity day and then like a volume day per se? Well, some, sometimes I get sick of it, but only for one reason. Uh, I use uh, a lot of events and everything to set up take times because I don't have regular rack. I have squat stands, so I have to improvise yeah. putting bands around kettlebells and such and so on because I have certain percentages and Pretty much, I have always over 200 pounds of bands or chains combined. So yeah. it's whole process of making it takes a lot of time. I have to put everything for squats, then restart everything for deadlift. And I lose around hour just for two exercises. And when that happens, I'm just out doing jumps. <laughs> okay. and then, but every time I cycled it out, my strength went down. So every time I drop speed bench, bench went down. There's something... Not just for produ force production and so on, because you practice form, you're set up every time, you have lots of sets, you push with max intensity, you blast through bands, blast through chains, and definitely shows on the max day. And the best stuff about it, you don't use very much weight. There's total weight at the end of the rep range, at the end of the range, but 
uh, at the bottom where it's hardest, it's pretty light. So you're recovered for maxes starting the next week. And every time I started doing heavier stuff, volume days instead of speed, max effort would suffer from it. Yeah, that makes sense. I've had similar a similar experience, I got to say. Um, so with speed work, you know, there are different types of speed work. I call it like light speed work and heavy speed work. And I'll yes. have periods, I'll kind of rotate. I'll have periods where I'm doing hypertrophy work periods where I'm doing lighter speed work, uh, periods with heavy speed work, uh, sometimes with straight weight. I kind of like the straight weight speed work more, um, especially if you're getting closer to a competition. Yeah, it's much closer to the competition lifts as well. But yeah. these days I run mostly stuff that Matt Venning would suggest. Really low percentages on the straight weight and so much of the accommodating resistance. So I pretty much do wave one 30%, wave two 35 and 40 30 third wave it's nothing on the bar weight but so much bends and i use both bends and chains at the same time so i oh, sometimes okay. i even have more weights of the chains and bends instead of straight weight and that's really really heavy at the top then you have deload and you have to be really really fast but that does does not fatigue me as much if i go higher percentages less bends less chains definitely i'm slower and proportionally weaker on the maxes so that's something i find out works re really well for me now when you use bands and chains i gotta say that's pretty unique yeah. uh, could you explain more about the differences in using both as compared to using just one or the other well uh, i like chains for max effort specifically because you you it's brute strength you can grind through them because they add weight slow, slowly, consistently. In, with bands, you have to be fast. If you're not fast, they add weight uh, yep. really fast. Yep. They Elastic so, energy. Yes. As yep. for a speed work, I use both because I have definitive percentages of uh, straight weight and accommodating resistance. And uh, when I get the total number of accommodating resistance, I am just sometimes lazy or I can't put that much bands because my rack would fly. <laughs> So I yeah, have to, yeah that that setup's got to be tough. Yeah, yeah. So I have to add less bands, but to compensate, I add chains on top of it. That's pretty uh, much okay. the okay. That makes sense. Right. Yeah, it's bread if I had a more stable rack, I'd probably add all so much bands. But mm -hmm. I have lots of bands as well, but not practical. So I go. Let's say I have right back uh, around sixty-six pounds of chains. I add that and calculate how much more bands do I need, calculate band tension with that scale, lug scale, yep. put everything together, calculate, and that's pretty much how I do speed stuff. 